My name is Jacob. I'm 29 years old and I'm from Washington State on the west coast of the United States. The beer culture is a pretty big part of the community on the west coast as it is in the United States. Craft beer is a huge part of the culture there. There are micro breweries all around. Every town you go into, you're gonna find at least one microbrewery, even if it's a really small town. And so, living there, I just got used to drinking great beer, finding great beer everywhere, every restaurant I go to, every store, you have aisles and aisles of craft beer. Anything that you can stuff hops into, that's what they love to do at the breweries there. And of course, they do other styles, but Generally, I think the Pacific Northwest is known as a really hop-forward area for beer because you have the Yakima Valley there, and that's, you know, it's kind of like the hops capital of the world. It was about two years ago that I moved to Austria, and I was excited to move here because of the, the beer tradition of Europe. You know, this is where beer came from. But shortly after moving here, I realized that it was obviously completely different from what I was used to. The beer culture and the beers differ quite vastly from the West Coast because you're using different, they use different ingredients and so they get different beers, obviously. But then they're also using a lot of, uh, here in Austria, they use a lot of old recipes recipes from way back in history and you know they have their mainstays like Helles which is the lager, they have pills, they have dunkels and anytime you go to a brewery here those are what you find, those are the, the standards for beers. When I moved here two years ago I realized that the beer culture was uh, so rooted here and traditional and also came to realize that there weren't a whole lot of breweries doing uh, the beer, the, the kind of beers that I like to drink. And it quickly became apparent to me, after living here not very long, that I couldn't get these really hop forward beers that I loved from back home. And so the next most um, obvious step for me was to try to make the beer that I wanted to drink on my own at my house because I knew I couldn't get at breweries here. And even the brewers that were, there were at that time when I moved here, there were just a small handful of brewers that were making these uh, kind of hop forward beers. Even the ones that were making those beers, pale ales, IPAs, they weren't up to the standard that I had gotten used to back home. And it's just they were using different ingredients and maybe different recipes. And so the, even if it was a beer called a pale ale, it wasn't quite a pale ale in, in the, the traditional terms that I knew what a pale ale was. My first experience home brewing here in Vienna was interesting because it was difficult to find the home brew equipment that I needed. And at the start, when I first got here, the home brewing culture was tiny. There was hardly anywhere to buy ingredients. There was one store on the outskirts of Vienna that had a very limited selection and the selection that they did have was overpriced and they didn't really store and keep the product properly and so I didn't really trust them. And uh, what, what ended up happening was that I connected with another home brewer online who also brews here in Vienna and he gave me some hints about some German home brewing websites that were actually pretty cheap and shipped to Austria for pretty cheap. And so we decided to go um, for the method that we wanted to brew with was we wanted to do all grain brewing. And the cheapest, uh, easiest way to start all grain brewing is this method called brew in a bag or B-I-A-B. And so <clears throat> we ended up buying pretty much the minimal amount of um, the minimal amount of materials that we needed to brew, at least to get started in all grain brewing for our first brew day. 
And so on our first brew day, we were using, you know, it was like, it was a learning experience because we didn't really know exactly what to expect or what we were doing. And we weren't sure if we we're gonna end up with a beer that was even drinkable. All of the different uh, variables that go into making a beer, it was hard to know if we were doing them right the very first time. And so, to my surprise, we ended up making a beer that was actually pretty darn drinkable. From there, our brew process kind of evolved, and we started, every time we brewed, we started to do, we would buy, you know, another piece of equipment and add it to our collection. And we ended up changing from brewing a bag to just a traditional all-grain brewing method. And so we get to tweak our gear a little bit, we tweak our recipes, and with every batch that we do, we get that beer tasting a little bit better every time and uh, getting a little closer to the beer that we really want to brew. The styles of beer that I brew, um, mainly I've been focusing on brewing IPA because that's my favorite kind of beer. And it's the one that's hardest to find a really well brewed IPA here in Austria. And so what I'd really like to do is brew a beer that I'm proud of. And so every time I brew, I get to change the recipe a little bit to, based on the way the beer has tasted before. And I'd, what I'd really like to do is focus on brewing a West Coast style IPA. The last few batches we've brewed have been IPAs. That's basically what I've brewed every time. You know, sometimes they kind of, the recipes turn kind of into maybe an amber ale, depending on the malts I'm using, or just a pale ale. And so, the last couple of batches, we've really narrowed down the ingredients that we want to use in order to hit this kind of nice, light-bodied, super hoppy West Coast IPA. The most satisfying thing about homebrewing to me is coming home at the end of the day and cracking open a beer that I've brewed myself, that I made with my own two hands, and that I know every single thing that has gone into that beer. And if I'm lucky, then it's a, it's a beer that I really enjoy drinking, which is my goal, but it doesn't happen every time. So if I'm lucky, I get to kick back and really enjoy a beer that I know I can't get anywhere else in Austria. And that's truly the reason why I started home brewing, is because I wanted to make beer that I couldn't get here, and with home brewing, now I can get it here. <laughs>